Hello to all my friends and family and welcome, welcome to Jim's 5am club. It's lunchtime, it's Friday, we've got the weekend ahead of us, the sun's breaking through and it's another beautiful Sydney summer's day, even though, there's, even though, even though, should I say, there's a bit of cloud cover and a gentle breeze, it is mild and it is beautiful. What I can see though is that we have the uh, flags flying at half mast today and I'm not quite sure why that's happening but what I'll do is I'll put it in the notes because usually it signifies that somebody from government is being buried or it's their funeral today but uh, I'll uh, try and find out a little bit more detail. Anyway let's go on and walk and talk. Uh, there's quite a few people about today so what I'll do is I'll uh, just go down here onto wharf number six to get out of the sun, get out of the breeze, get out of the uh, way of the people and basically continue our book summary for today and it's a cracker. Today's book summary is a beauty and it's entitled The Happy Mind. The Happy Mind, what a great book summary for a Friday afternoon to kick in the weekend. The Happy Mind by Kevin Horsley and Louis Forey. Louis Forey and Kevin Horsley have put together a book entitled The Happy Mind. And the authors uh, kick off their book with a nice little quote saying that happy people use their happy brain to limit the irrelevant messages of their primeval brain or their primitive brain which is uh, an empowering way to start a book on happiness because what this is suggesting here is that uh, we basically have two types of brain we've got the uh, reptilian brain or the primeval brain the old brain the original brain which we have which is there to help us survive and we also have a new brain the neocortex which is there to enable us to think, to rationalise and to, um, to manage, manage our way through life. So we've got two brains or two aspects to our brains that we can uh, leverage and use to our benefit. And the author gives us some great news. The author says that we all have what it takes to be happy inside of us. So each and every one of us has, uh, has the, uh, the ability to be happy and it's all part of us, it's all inside of us. And uh, the other thing is that the author talks about here is that in order to understand happiness we need to get a grip and understand unhappiness. So the author says that unhappiness basically comes from a misalignment. Unhappiness comes from misalignment of our old brain. Our old brain is misaligned to uh, today's realities because uh, during our evolution, during our, our creation, where we seem to have been given the tools that were really important back then for those times to enable us to survive, to not be eaten by tigers, to basically um, be alert all the time to dangers and if we did have a danger and of course a danger in, in, uh, in our early years of development as humans would have spilt um, absolute um, um, I guess destruction or death. So we needed to have a fight or flight response. Either stand and fight, if we're fighting off villages from another group coming to steal our wives or steal our food or kill our families, or flight, which meant that we had to try and run away or escape. For example, if a, uh, if a bear or a tiger or a lion or somebody came searching for us to eat us. 
so uh, but uh, that style of brain that style of thinking the fight or flight response according to the authors here is no longer relevant or less relevant in today's realities because the chances of, of us getting getting eaten or getting killed today are far less possible than what they would have been in years gone by so the next point the author makes is that happiness isn't something that magically falls upon us what we need to do in order to achieve happiness is that we need to change our own conduct and the behaviors um, for, for the behaviors of others around us to change as well so it's all about using our neocortex or our new brain to think think of ways and think of methods and, and habits to help us uh, leverage um, our new environment and the realities around us so uh, what causes our unhappiness and this is important the one big reason for our unhappiness resides in our reptilian brain in our old brain so to speak um, which is the origin of unhappiness so our reptilian brain our old brain is oriented to grant us survival as we mentioned before so the only thing important to our old brain was to enable us to survive it wasn't about being happy it wasn't about us being fulfilled it wasn't about us being joyous and uh, popular and handsome and all of those sorts of things it was oriented simply for our survival the famous flight or fight response mechanism as well as all of our unconscious instincts which were triggered and are triggered by our reptilian brain our old brain so there are instincts that uh, are beyond our ability to, to manage uh, beyond our ability to control directly because they are subconscious and these instincts are there to protect us or were there originally to protect us from harm's way the new brain on the other hand the neocortex allows rational thinking and it is it is the evolutionary brain that we have and is much more sophisticated it's a much more sophisticated part of our brain and the new brain unfortunately is the servant of the old brain unless we do something about it to manage it and to make it um, serving uh, uh, put make make it able to serve us and to serve our immediate needs because our brains believe it or not even our new brains now or our current brains still act on fears as if they are life-threatening which which they aren't you know they aren't so even perceptions of fear are enough to shut down our neocortex our new brain and activate our old brain and activate our um, un uh, um, our subconscious or our unconscious instincts our reptilian brain can't tell if a threat is real or perceived it can't tell the difference between a real threat and one that that is imagined we are biologically wired to be unhappy because of this flight or fight response and because of the way our reptilian brain our old brain is wired in order to make us survive so how do we achieve happiness is the next point to come out of this book from this author and the author here talks about the importance of uh, living intentionally because happy happiness requires intentional effort it just doesn't come naturally and uh, I guess the the way to understand it is that um, it's easy it's easy to be happy 
but it's easy, even easier to be unhappy because happiness requires intention. Happiness requires effort, whereas unhappiness just requires you to do nothing and just be reactionary and just to react to what's going on around you. So happiness, according to the author, is something that you can create through deliberate effort. It needs effort. It needs you to do something as opposed to sit there and just wait for things to happen. You need to assume responsibility for your own happiness. So there's a call to action for each and every one of us. Each and every one of us need to be responsible for our own happiness and not to depend on others to create or to try and create happiness for us. So, and we mustn't sit back and play the uh, role of a victim because if we're playing the role of a victim, then the natural state of a victim is to live in fear, uh, fight, or fight, fight or flight response, to live in fear and to bas basically cower cower away from the opportunities and the, the opportunities to be happy and to be um, enlightened. Admittedly, some people are predisposed to happiness due to their genes or excellent parenting. But even those who are not predisposed to happiness can do something about it. And the way we go about it is that we need to transform our behaviors and habits and align them in a way so that they're directed to at least give us an opportunity to experience happiness and to look towards happiness. And it's easy to understand that people want to mirror us. Mirror us. If we're sour, if we're negative, if we're, if we're you know, Debbie Downers, if we're um, cynical, if we're uh, always looking for fault, then people will mimic what we're putting out. They'll mirror it and they'll mirror it back to us so that if you're mean, they'll be mean. If you're cynical, they'll be cynical. If you're uh, negative, they'll be negative. And no wonder we create the environment around us because all it is is a bloody reflection of who we are. So uh, in order to get people to listen to you, the simple thing is you need to speak less. Because if you're speaking all the time and dominating a group or a relationship, then you're not going to get people giving you feedback or talking to you. They're just going to be listening to your babble all the time. And the final point from this book is it's impossible to control someone else's behavior. You know, to all those people who are married or are thinking of getting married, you're not going to be able to control your partner's behavior in any way. Because the only thing you can do is change your own behavior and create your own and um, manage your own behavior. And by managing your own behavior, by changing your own behavior, then and only then are you able to maybe influence other people around you. So um, I guess that's the key. That's the end of this book. So thank you very much for joining me this lunchtime, this Friday lunchtime down on wharf number six for Jim's 5am club where we've talked about a wonderful book entitled The Happy Mind. And uh, let's finish off with a positive affirmation. I'm alive, I am well, and I feel absolutely great. To my friends and family, stay connected, stay relevant, and most importantly, stay reasonable. And let's do whatever we can to be the happy mirror to um, engage our neocortex, to manage our reptilian state, our reptilian brain, and to respond rather than to react what is happening around us and to also know that we just can't change the world around us we can't change the behaviors of others all we can do is just change ourselves and hopefully be the mirror that other people see 
and help them um, mirror our behaviours and lead to more constructive relationships and more con constructive uh, engagements with the people around us. Thank you very much once again. I look forward to catching up with you later on where we'll go through another book summary. And uh, it's, it's the weekend. I look forward to a great weekend and I hope you guys have a great weekend as well. So we'll finish up now. Thank you very much. Vilakya from Gems 5am Club. And we'll meet again, hopefully, with the, another opportunity to go on a volta and to discover something new to help us get through the morning, get through the day, enable us to live, learn and pass it on. Bye for now.